I look like a Missy Elliott. I can't stand the rain. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So obviously I'm in better spirits. You guys see me over here looking all funky in my neon. And my glitter backdrop is back. Let's give it up for glitter backdrops. And today's video is going to be like, I guess like a story time slash uh, advice kind of video so i really really been wanting to do this video for a long time i just been pondering on when would be the appropriate time to drop it and since i'm trying to you know come into my own and be comfortable with myself especially here on youtube i decided that i should share this with you because i'm a thousand and ten percent sure every single female or male even though they don't like to admit it, has gone through um, some type of heartbreak. So today I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> sorry, about my most recent heartbreak situation because dwelling on the past is whatever. Like I can tell you guys how I got over it um, in the past, but this current situation or the situation that happened currently, um, it really changed the game for me like it really broke me so i'm just gonna jump right into the situation and then we'll have like a little chit chat afterwards so basically um everything my heartbreak is a continuation of my story time when i told you i caught my boo creeping at the subway station so i will link that video somewhere over here or maybe up top i'll put that video for you for you guys to go ahead and watch that because that's basically the part one so a little synopsis actually no go and check that video out pause this go watch that and come back to this because i'm just gonna pick up from where i left off so after i had caught him creeping at the subway station um me or he and i like did not communicate at all we did not talk at all it was like a dead situation to me because it was so fresh i was like what am i even gonna really care for um within that time span so it was about a year since that situation took place that we didn't speak a word in english we didn't see each see each other and like i said in the other video he dead ass lives up the street from me so <laughs> it was like awkward like we never crossed paths period um so yeah a year went by and we didn't speak to each other a word in english now, last Christmas Eve, we were reacquainted at a mutual friend's uh, Christmas party. Now, it was, so this is 20, um, <clears throat> 2015 Christmas. And it was very lighthearted, easy, no ill intent at all. And so, um... That whole night, like, I was mad ignoring him and whatever. And, okay, to give him a name, I'm going to call him, um, he did not like the name I gave him last time. He felt like it was disrespectful. And, like, I, I know I shouldn't even really care. But I'm going to be respectful. So, I'm just going to give him, like, a name. I'll just call him Dude. So, me and Dude were at the party. And it was just chill. Like, we were drinking. It was cool. It was fine. I act like I didn't know him because basically I don't know you. Like, you're a fraud to me in that moment. Anyhow, he ended up having to take me home only because we were in the same vicinity. And while we were in the short little car ride home, um, we decided to bury the hatchet. Like, we decided to just let bygones be bygones. And we were going to try to be friends. Obviously, that didn't work for long. So, um, Christmas came, all of that good stuff. So, now this is a couple of days before um a couple of days before new year's and um i just go to go check in one time whatever it was cool nothing like that happened but um yeah i just decided like okay whatever like let's just give this a go around he said he wasn't dealing with nobody even though he had his little situation he said he wasn't dealing with nobody or whatever so he wanted to give it a go as well like his react like his demeanor about the situation was like 
he wanted to see what was up as well. Or that's how I read it, okay? I cannot speak for him. So I'm going to say that's how I read his demeanor. But uh, you would think that after all the F-boy stories that I would be able to see through the fog and the smoke. But I wasn't because I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I was being very, very, very shallow um, in that situation. It was definitely based off of appearance at first. And you should never really fall in love um, or fall for people's appearances because, like they say, you don't want to judge a book by its cover. And that's what I did. Um... So in the beginning, everything was peachy keen. Like, I remember we had a conversation one night and I was telling him that I love red wine. And like one, t one time when I went to go check him, he had red wine. And I was like, oh, that's thoughtful. Like, you're really picking up on like the little things that I like. Um, and one time he told me to come over to watch a movie. And when I got there, like... He had my two favorite candies. I completely even forgot that I had told him that those are my favorite candies. We would sit down and we'd have like really long conversations about life, about friendships, like deep stuff. And so because he confided so much in me, um, as I did he, um, I figured that we were working towards being something. Because in my eyes, I'm not going to come and confide in you um, and tell you all my deep, dark secrets and my thoughts if I don't care for you on a specific level. So, I don't know if guys do this nowadays, like if they just walk around and confide in every shorty, but he was confiding in me. So, that is why, that's what really made me fall for him because I felt like he was bearing his heart on his sleeve for me, to me. So, that went on for a bit. So, here's where... Things started to take a turn for the worse and where I started to turn a blind eye to the red flags. So one time I had gone over to his house and um, ugh, literally my stomach is turning thinking about the series of events. So I had gone to his house one time and he had logged on to... Um, he turned on his TV and you know everyone have a smart TV so you can watch like Netflix or whatever um, but he had a PS4 um, and so like you know it's connected to your TV whatever you can search the internet or whatever y'all know how PS4 works so he logged onto his PS4 and um, I see somebody's name like a female's name like a female that I happen to know not she's not my friend but like she's she was around my social circle at the time. The girl who I was friends with at the time, it was like she was close to the, her people them. So she was around. I see her. We know each other. We went to vacation Bible study at, um, in the summertime at church together. Like, I know her. So I see this girl's name in his PS4. But um, I didn't make too much of it. So I said to her, because I had seen it before and I just ignored it so when i had seen it again i was like how do you know so and so i'm gonna call her shorty so i'm gonna say how do you know shorty and he's like oh it's my boy's cousin and i'm just like okay because here's the thing when you're talking to somebody all you have is their word right so if you tell me <laughs> it's your boy's cousin why am i gonna sit there and go back and forth with you and argue like <laughs> i don't really know if it's your boy's cousin or not and at the time I didn't know she was anybody significant to think about or whatever. So I let it roll off my back. I said, okay, cool. Strike number, flag number one that I should have been like, mm -mm, because this comes up a little bit later. Flag number two. And this is honestly where like I think the heartbreak started because I have fallen so quick for him. Like first it was facial. So first it was shallow. And then, like I said, because he was bearing his heart to me, I felt like he was being inviting and like letting me into his world so i started to really fall for him at the end of the day we can't help who we like so whoever's gonna judge and be like oh she's stupid then i guess yeah i was stupid whatever anywho flag number two i'm at his crib one night and we're watching the other move the other woman that movie with cameron diaz Nicki minaj and those other people um we're watching the other woman and if you don't know the movie, The Other Woman, it's basically this man, he's married to this girl, 
had a side thing with another lawyer thing and then had another side thing with the next little bimbo shorty. But he was married. So I said to him, I was like, haha, like this is so funny. Like this is basically you just poking fun at the situation, not really knowing that there's some actual realism to the situation. Come to find out now, like <sighs> this dude's telling me <laughs> that he's like <sighs> this man told me he's married. And I was like, oh boy, bad, like, you cannot be married <laughs> because how? <laughs> like, you're young. What are you talking about? And I was no ring on your finger, so you're not married. And he's basically like, he was basically had a, he had a, um, a marriage like commitment to, um, somebody in his life. I don't want to go too, too into details because depending on who may come across this, I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm just telling my story. So he had an arrangement that was basically like marriage to somebody else. And it like broke my heart because I'm like, whether there's a ring, whether there's a signed paper, like if some, if to somebody else and you're also acknowledging that you are in a locked in commitment, what is you doing over here? Like, why are you here? And that night, like, when everything was said to me, I literally felt like I went into shock. Like, I was just like, of all F-boy situations I've ever been in, I've never, ever, ever had anybody tell me that <laughs> they were married or in no type of locked-in commitment like that. Like, that's not even making any sense to me. How, like, that could even be a thing. So... He said he's married, whatever. And in that moment, I should have left. Like I, when I when I say left, like I should have checked out emotionally. I should have I should have said this is too much. Like this too much. I should have said goodbye. And to be honest, in the very moment, I was like, yeah, like I'm over. Like I'm done with this. Like this is pointless. This is stupid. But obviously, because my feelings were so deep in, I just went on back and we all know we had that person that we just go on back to like it it happened whether it's your ex your baby four of us like whoever like you just know that you have that one person you just run on back to and so that was the case with that so moving forward everything was okay kind of after that so remember those were the first two flags the place the playstation 4 and then the fact that he was like in a situation so after that, now, um, this is when stuff started to get, like, really shaky. So I, it got to a point where he was, like, not really being the same. So, like, we went from seeing each other, like, mad times through the week to, like, sometimes just twice through the week. And then it went down to, like, just once through the week. And I'm like, okay. But because I know he had other responsibilities, plus he had work, and I know he was... Um, going back to school taking some courses I wasn't pushing it I wasn't stressing it like yeah I was annoying me was irritating but I wasn't pushing it I wasn't stressing it I kind of just let it go um so I remember sometimes I would call him just to be like hey like what you doing and he'd be like why what do you mean what am I doing like why are you asking and I'm just like what why are you getting so defensive when all I'm doing is asking you a simple question like doesn't even make any sense why you're getting defensive. Um, but that was going on for a little bit. And so, of course, like, we had multiple conversations where it was like, okay, I'm like, I'm leaving. And then it's like, okay, no, 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 I'm staying. And then he'd be like, maybe you should go. And then he'd be like, no, 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 just stay. So, we started doing this back and forth tug of war um, as to what we were going to do with the situation. The situation that had no title, like... That, that was the biggest problem. That was the biggest mistake. That I understood that this situation had no title. It had no real direction. Yet still, I stuck around. Um, and so, yeah. Basically, all in all, we stopped talking to each other. And when we stopped talking to each other, it was really, um, it was really hard for me. Um, especially because he, came, he became such a, a part of my routine. Like... When I would be upset about anything, like work is annoying me, school was annoying me, home was annoying me, 
like I just always could just walk up the street and go to him and I could talk like actually talk and express my concerns and he would have something to say um he used to want to push me so bad to do this youtube stuff to be honest like push me so bad to move forward and like pursue um like a business with like doing hair and all of that like he was a friend and like a confidant and like a baby to me all in one so like i said he was a routine and he was a serious like intense routine to me so when we stopped talking of course it was hurtful it was really hard for me to get over and it was really hard for me to figure out but this is where the real heartbreak came into play so we stopped talking we stopped talking and i was able to swallow the pill a little bit because i knew that throughout our situation i wasn't always the easiest person either i was doing a lot of petty stuff and honestly girls like if you're in a situation and things are not going your way, don't get petty. Like, <laughs> don't get petty because it just does not work in your favor. So I was doing a lot of petty stuff. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I was a saint. Like I didn't anticipate um, any type of consequences or repercussions for my actions. But this is what really, really hurt. So we stopped talking. So say we ended up deciding that we're going to be done with the situation on like a Tuesday the Sunday would have been Mother's Day so the Saturday I had gone out with um, my family and my girl at the time hit me like yo um, I gotta talk to you about something so I was like okay um and I was like, once she said, like, I got to talk to you about something, I felt it in my heart. Like, I knew it was going to be about dude. Like, I just knew it was going to be about dude. But I just couldn't figure out what it is that she would have wanted to say to me. Mind you, I'm all with my family. But, like, the way she said it to me, like, you know when your girl messaged you and be like, yo, I need to hit you on some real stuff. Like, you start getting nervous. You're like, okay, like, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Like, you just want the tea. So, basically... My girl shows me that she was riding around with Shorty. And, um, basically Shorty was like, oh, like, I gotta go pull up on my van because, um, he got some stuff at my crib. Like, I ain't gonna come get his stuff. And so she's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But my girl knows dudes, like, area. Like, she knows where dude be at. Because, like, obviously she was, she was my girl. Like, she, I tell her everything. And plus... She been with me, like, when I would have gone over there or whatever. So, she rolls up to the area, exact same area where dudes stay at, and Shadi was like, oh, like, he's coming. When her man comes downstairs, it's dude. So, my girl's like, wait, okay. So, she anal analyzes the situation and finds out that Shorty, so remember from she was on the PlayStation, that's my that's my boy's cousin. Shorty and him were apparently dating. Like that was her man for like a year. She's the one who bought him the PlayStation. Like she's the one been out up and through up in his crib. But I'm like, my nigga, where do you find the time? Like, if I'm here and your other situation, like your commitment. Is here and there. Ain't got her here like. Who finds the time? There's 24 hours in a day. Like I'm not understanding. So. Um, finds out that. Shorty and him was dating for a year. And. I was just like. What burned was not that he was. Dating somebody for a year. That's not what burned. What burned was that I knew the person personally. What burned was that it was all happening under my nose with somebody who during this time frame I was around and didn't even know. What burned was that he had zero regard, like zero regard for the situation. Because when I found out, I pulled up on him the same night. Cause I'm like, 
what's up? Like, how is this a situation? And he wanted to do the typical nigga thing to do, which was act like he didn't care. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> Either you get with it or you get lost. That was his attitude towards the situation. And it crushed me. Like, it demolished me. Like, what crushed me was that I watched him go from down for me, down for me, down for me to not about me, not about me, not about me and have no care in the world that he was dead ass hurting me the way he was hurting me. Um, even though everything was very black and white, like I could see everything for what it was, I was like trying to tell myself like, okay, mm -mm, this can't be what it is because like just no. I just didn't want the situation to be a reality so bad i was in denial for a little bit about it and it had me like super stressed out like i felt like nothing in that moment could have <laughs> could have changed the way i felt could have fixed the way i felt nothing could help me sleep like i was losing sleep over somebody who wasn't losing sleep over me you know what I'm saying? And we've all gone through that type of situation where it's like, at the end of the day, this dude is over here. He doesn't even business that he hurt you the way he hurt you, sis. Like, you got to let it go. And it's always easier said than done. Like, all my friends would be like, girl, you just got to forget about it. Just got to forget about it. Oh, he's nothing. He lost out. Da -da 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 -da. And it's like, yes, 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 I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But that's just not what I'm trying to hear right now. Like, my feelings are my feelings like my heart is still hurting my head is still hurting i'm still losing sleep i'm still asking why even though i understand why the situation played out the way it played out it's like why like why pray on me like i didn't come to you asking for you to pray on me like if you knew you had your situation why didn't you sit over there um and yeah like a lot of things just played over in my mind about the situation i was mad that i was so stupid in the situation like i turned a blind eye to everything i saw the flags and i ignored them i was mad that i felt like he had the upper hand on me and i felt like she had the upper hand on me too and in life i don't like feeling like people have the upper hand on me like i'm just not that girl i do not like it like i don't like feeling like somebody has the upper hand on me and i felt like they both had the upper hand on me um i was mad because I had invested a lot of emotions and time into the situation. So for somebody to talk about it like it's nothing, um, that killed me. Because my emotions are very serious to me. So if I'm giving you any, like, understand. Like, it's not a joke. It's not a game. And if it was a joke or a game to you, like, you should have you should have expressed that from jump. So, dealing with heartbreak. Dealing with heartbreak is hard. Like, it's very hard. It's a personal healing process. So I cannot tell you you're going to get over it in three months. I cannot tell you that you're going to get over it in six months. I can't tell you that it's going to be nothing to you in a year. Like, it's personal. So it all depends on how the situation panned out, what took place in the situation. It depends on just who you are as an individual. You know what I'm saying? Healing, to me, has no specific time frame at all so understand that when you're dealing with heartbreak you have to feel it out like there's no shortcuts like no shortcuts at all you feel it out you take your time what worked for me was that a lot of the stuff i wanted to say to him i will just go ham in my notes in my phone like i will go super ham and write long ass novels about how I'm feeling, how I felt about the situation, how I feel about him, literally everything. And you'll see, like, when you read it back, you can see your transition in emotions. You go from upset, sad, happy, attitude. Like, you feel, you see it all. But it's always good to have some type of outlet, some type of release. Um, Find a hobby. Like, I know that sounds cliche and whack, but you dead ass gotta find a hobby. Um... The devil finds work for idlers to do. So if you're sitting down idling, you're not keeping yourself occupied, you're not trying to be productive, um, 
you're not gonna heal properly because you're gonna have way too much time on your hand to sit down and think and think and rethink and over process what happened what ran wrong who did what wrong who didn't do what wrong and at the end of the day it's not worth it because you see when you do get over it you're gonna look back at everything and be like why was i tripping back then and it's crazy because you can spend forever like in the first week of heartbreak you'll think that you will never get over it and by the time you hit that point where you're like mm, i don't really mm, i don't really know if i care too much anymore you're gonna be like wow and just to think like at one point i thought that this was it like this is all i was going to ever think about so surround yourself, surround yourself with positive people good people um, a thousand and ten percent surround yourself with good people people who you know they want to see you do better they want to see you get over the situation and they're gonna be honest with you to be honest if you're trying to get over a situation and you have friends who just tell you okay well girl it's gonna be fine no you don't need to be around that person you need to be around a friend who's gonna sit there and let you cry on their shoulder um let you say everything that you want to say if you gotta scream like they will sit there and let you scream. And once you calm down, they will talk to you. They will analyze the situation. They will talk to you from both angles, from your perspective and probably from his perspective. That's why it's always good to have a guy friend that you trust and a female friend that you trust and both of them be your support system because trust me, if I didn't have my support team when I was going through this situation, like I probably would have keyed that nigga car to keep it a buck 50 i know i was close like i was that close to keen on like a car like mm. so you definitely want to have um a good support system also trust in god on everything trust in god i did a lot of praying like that used to be nice right? i used to be up like just god please like i'm like bargaining with him like if you just let me wake up tomorrow with feeling no heartbreak like i'll do everything like talk to him trust in him understand that he gets you like he gets your situation he understands what it is that you're going through he obviously would never want you to be hurt sitting down here life in shambles but you want to know what he places us in certain situations sometimes for us to understand just who we are for us to to see that we deserve better and we should never settle because when you settle you will end up in situations like this and when you push through hunty you will have everything you want and more so definitely trust in god um like i said get a hobby because you don't want to idle have a great support system and just understand like you have to go through the motions you just have to there's no way around it there's no other way to do it you have to go through it you have to go through your moments of being extremely sad you have to go through your moments of being extremely angry you have to go through your moments of just being numb but understand though once you hit that numb phase the top the light at the end of the tunnel tunnel becomes very very bright because the moment you hit numb you've already like exerted all your energy into all the other emotions so from numb, there's only rebuilding. Like just rebuilding, figuring out how to feel, how to like what you want to feel. And heartbreak is always there's it's always good to experience heartbreak at least once in life. Like it's gonna sound crazy, but you should experience heartbreak at least once in life because it will always remain in your mind and it will always remind you exactly and everything you don't want in an individual. Like there's it'll open up your eyes to understand like when i see the red flags when i have a gut feeling never ignore it never ignore it and that only comes from experience and heartbreak is an experience so i hope that from me giving this little story time um somebody out there understands that i get the situation i understand what it's like to basically be the side thing <laughs> and experience her off of it it happens to people 
obviously you're not gonna go out of your way to be a side thing like and no nigga's gonna come to you and say hey you're my side thing but if you see certain red flags baby girl do not ignore it and to these dudes too because you know girls be getting mad savage nowadays if you guys have a gut instinct don't ignore your gut never ignore your gut instinct if you see a red flag don't ignore it because you see that flag for a reason now i'm not telling you to go out there and search for these problems or these flags or these flaws in people because then that's just gonna make you crazy but i am saying that if you see it don't ignore it don't go off about it but monitor it and think to yourself how do i want to deal with this because if you see something you don't like you probably gonna see it again and again and a leopard is not gonna change your spots that's all i'm gonna say so anyways i hope i reached somebody with this video um i hope i didn't offend anybody by this video um at the end of the day this is just my story to tell i dead ass went through a heartbreak situation and i just felt like it was only fair that i share my story with you guys so you guys understand like these things happen on the daily and they happen to everybody um and you're gonna be fine like i mean you're gonna be fine eventually but in the moment like i said you just gotta feel it out anyways if you guys haven't already subscribed to my channel do so now like right there like right there subscribe make sure you give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video next week. Bye.